the WHO is domiciled in Geneva. Um, and so it has special status. Its employees are, are exempt from tax. And uh, they and their families all have diplomatic uh, immunity. How is the WHO set up? Well, it has something called the, the World Health Assembly. Uh, it meets yearly in Geneva. Uh, the current uh, chairperson of the World Health Assembly, the WHO, is a gentleman by the name of Harsh Vardhan. In, in 2021, uh, Mr. Sharma, the Indian Medical Association, the Indian version of the, uh, the BMJ, the largest association of doctors in India, issued a statement when he objected to, to Vardhan, who was uh, endorsing uh, uh, Coronil, a, a product uh, that, that was being made in India, the IMA, the Indian Medical Association, questioned the ethics of a health minister, Mr. Vardhan, the health minister at the time, of that country, to release a, a, a fabricated and unscientific product onto the people of India. He's since gone on to become chairperson of the WHA, who are going to be presiding over this, this new treaty that's going to be uh, uh, sitting before every government in the world. Uh, given that he resigned from the cabinet in India over this controversy, why has he ever been trusted with greater responsibility? It seems he's failed upwards, like many at the WHO and the WHA. But who's now funding the WHO? Like many of our, our regulators in the UK, the MHRA, 86% funded by industry sources. The Joint Committee on Vaccination and Immunisation, in their personal declarations, they declared over a billion pounds of interest in Big Pharma. It's 86% funded by external sources. Uh, the UK is not the, th the third largest donor. Uh, the uh, the th second largest donor It's the third largest donor. The second largest donor after Germany is the Bill and Melinda Gates uh, 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 Foundation. And I think Gavi is the fifth. So you have those together. That is, they are the biggest donors to the, the WHO. And you have to think, why, why are they doing this? They're also the, the biggest donors or, or biggest uh, investors in... Uh, in, in pharmaceuticals and the, uh, the experimental mRNA technology, which, which proved so prof profitable for those who uh, proposed it and produced it during the, during the last pandemic. Indeed, the WHO, it says the member states' contributions to WHO funds have been capped and today account for only 16% of WHO's total budget, with an increasing share of funding to WHO coming from voluntary contributions, where donors direct funding according to their priorities. Well, their priorities might not well be the priorities of my constituents in North West Leicestershire or the, or the electorate in the UK, but he who pays uh, the piper call, calls the tune. The WHO are, are promoting the influence of private-public partnerships. They, they, they promote that on, on their websites to the point where it's pay-to-play. Anyone can buy... Uh, influence at the WHO, it's just going to cost, cost you money. And when it comes to when they're, when they're consulting, their own internal report, um, their survey evaluation, final report, May 23, uh, 23rd of May 2022, the various interest groups have more input to the WHO policy than the member states. It said under the WHO's own figures, the member states' only participation was 40% of the input, whereas 60% came from non-member states and 276 stakeholders. So, so it's clear there's a strong external influence on the policy of the WHO, an entity which, if the, uh, the amendments to the international health regulations and the pandemic treaty were to be passed, and doing nothing is not an option, if this House does nothing and does not vote, they will come to pass uh, by May 24. So doing nothing is, is not an option. It isn't going to go away that the WHO has the ability to say what is disinformation. And when anybody says to you that the science is settled on any issue, I suggest that this House would, would, would smell a rat straight away because science is never settled. There is always open for modification, for new, new things to be discovered, theses to be refined. And what the, what the WHO is saying is that the WHO will be the arbiter of what the science is. Those who... I, I just really worry whether colleagues in this have actually read the, read, the, read the treaty because clearly, you know, when you take out the words not binding as an amendment it then becomes binding they're bringing in a, a, an idea called One Health so, and this then extends the ability 
of the, uh, the Director General of the WHO to call uh, um, a public health emergency of international concern, which incidentally is, is abbreviated to fake, fake, a, a fake, so, uh, and it, it says that he can bring it in on the suspicion, the risk of an international uh, incident. It doesn't even have to be about a, a, a pathogen that's affecting humans. It, c it can affect animals. He's taking the powers because it could be because of the environment or an increase in the levels of CO2. I suggest that honourable and right honourable members read the treaty. It's, it's a massive extension of powers. And at the drop of a hat, one man, Mr Tedros, can call a, a, uh, for, for massive powers to the WHO. And not only will he call when, when he takes the powers, he will decide when the pandemic or the emergency is over and when he will possibly give us the powers back to this house where elected representatives are supposed to be representing the interests of, of our constituents. Well, that will all, all be suspended. And, and I would, while we're talking about Mr. Tedros, I mean, I would just remind the house that this gentleman who will be deciding the fate of the world is the conduct of the WHO in the recent uh, um, Ebola uh, outbreak in uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo where, where 80, 83 individuals who are working for the WHO sexually abused uh, local women and including the sexual assault of a 13 year old girl and, and it, was, it was all covered up uh, Mr Sharma and, 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 and an elite document from the WHO which would have been in front of Mr. Tedros's committee, a confidential UN, UN report submitted to the WHO last month, concluded that the manager's handling of the case didn't violate WHO sexual exploitation policies because the woman concerned was not a beneficiary of WHO aid since she didn't receive any humanitarian support. That is completely unacceptable. If that's the, the rules of an organisation, we'll be deciding whether my constituents are locked down for six months, three months, and whether they can go and see their granny. I, I don't think it's acceptable. Also, this, these new treaties, they compress the time for governments of mandatory reporting lines of 72 hours from when a possible, a risk uh, to public health has to be uh, reported to the WHO, and he'll make a decision. This is far too little time for any research, any meaningful research to be done as to what the real risk is, and it will lead to lots of potential for false alarms and unnecessary disruption. These are huge powers that these two instruments would seek to take away from this parliament and every other parliament uh, around the world, and they need to be considered very, very strongly. Sticking your head in the sand isn't going to do. It won't do for my constituents. You know, if we learn anything from the, the vote we had in 2016 is that people in this country, they do not want to be ruled by unelected, unaccountable uh, bureaucrats. And there's no one more unaccountable and unelected of people in the WHO who don't pay tax and they and their families have uh, immunity from prosecution because they've got diplomatic immunity. They're also under the huge financial interests of whoever wishes to, wishes to fund them. It will have the power to shut down any business in this country, regardless of, uh, of, of what the local people think or even this, this parliament. It, it takes away all the protections that, that uh, being in a democracy offers. It actually takes away Article 3 in, in the original constitution, which is, is the respect of human right and dignity. That goes and is just replaced by a bland statement saying that there will be <laughs> equity. And, it, and equity means... Whatever it means, it means that everyone's going to be treated equally. It also means that one solution to any international problem around the world. And that leads to an all-or-nothing situation. There's no competition. And if there was only one car manufacturer, only one solution, I'm not sure it would be the best car that we could ever have. I think competition between nations for solutions is a good thing. Um, I, have, I have grave concerns. It would be foolish not to see that the big pharmaceutical giants with their lobbying power they have huge influence over the direction of the WHO. And like many multinational corporations, uh, their size and scale supersedes even national governments. With over 80% of the, the WHO tree uh, budget now uh, specified funding, and they have the ability to direct policy. The MHRA were looking to authorise the, the vaccination of, of children down to the age of six months in this country. I'm, I'm very grateful that the government listened and they, we didn't do that. Indeed, it was then pushed back to people 
uh, over 50, which I'm delighted that the government now has put it back to only those over, over 75. That's, that's, in a few months, that's a huge uh, difference from uh, we're going to vaccinate everybody. Sovereignty belongs to the people. It's not ours to give away. 